The other day, Ruben Blends tagged me in a post on Reddit, letting me know they've used one of my tutorials to create the latest animation, specifically my loading bar tutorial. And when I saw it, I thought, huh, that's neat. But not as neat as the other part of the animation. Mind-bending stuff. After DMing a bit, I learned that the effect was cleverly made using an array modifier and a curve modifier. So naturally, I wanted to recreate it with geometry nodes, and Ruben Blends very kindly gave me their blessing to even make a tutorial on it. And of course, if you want to see how the original was made, I have added a link to their tutorial on it in the description, and I highly recommend it. But now, let's make this with geometry nodes. First, let's create the curve object that we will use as the profile of the double donut. Add a mesh circle, then go into edit mode by pressing tab. Press A to select the entire circle, then press G, then Y, then 1 to move the circle one unit up along the Y axis, then left click to confirm. Press Shift D to duplicate the circle, and right click to confirm. Then press G, then Y, then minus 2 to move it two units down on the Y axis, and once again left click to confirm. Select the two vertices that are overlapping, and press X to delete them. Next, we will merge the vertices that are across from each other to close the gaps. Select two vertices, then press M, then select at center, and repeat the process on the other side as well. Then press tab to go back to object mode. With the circle object selected, right click and select convert to, and then curve. Next, let's move on to the geometry nodes part. Add a plane. Then head over to the geometry nodes workspace and add a new node tree to the plane. Add a curve circle and connect it to the group output. Next, we will need a curve to mesh node and an object info node. Select the circle object we made before in the dropdown of the object info node. Then connect it to the profile curve socket of the curve to mesh node. The curve to mesh node converts the curve circle to a mesh that is shaped like whatever curve you use as a profile curve. For example, a quadrilateral curve will give you a rectangular profile. A curve spiral can give you something like this, and so on. You can essentially create a mesh with any profile you want by deforming and manipulating the curve that you're using as a profile curve. Next, we need to do two things. We need to adjust the thickness of the double donut, and we need to rotate the profile. Add a set curve radius node, and a set curve tilt node. The curve itself has no thickness, but it does however have an internal radius value, which is the value that is used when the conversion to a mesh is handled, and we can adjust that value with a set curve radius node. This value is dependent on the size of your curves, so play around with it until you get a look that you like. In order to make the outward rotation effect, we just need to animate the tilt value of the set curve tilt node. It might not be completely obvious what is going on just by looking at this, so here is another way of thinking about it. When we adjust the curve tilt, we are only really telling Blender at what angle, or tilt, that we should align the profile curve to. In essence, we are rotating the curve along the curve itself. Another way to create the same effect without tilting the curve is to simply rotate the profile curve object along the z-axis. If you're using 3.1 or above, the easiest way to animate values is by using a scene time node and use the seconds value as the curve tilt. If you want to adjust the speed, you can do that with a math node set to multiply. If you are using 3.0 however, you can either keyframe the tilt by going to frame 1 of your timeline and pressing I while hovering the mouse pointer over the tilt value. Then move to the end of the timeline, change the tilt value to some multiple of 180 or 360, and adding a keyframe for the tilt value with I. Or you can add a value node. and in the value field type hashtag frame to have the value update every frame to the current frame of the timeline. 
If the speed is too fast, you can add a math node set to divide, and divide the value with something like 10 or 100. Finally, let's add a material to the double donut. Create a new material in the Materials tab, then add a set material node to the node tree. Then select the material in the dropdown. To get the same kind of look as the original, I will use a greenish yellow with a specular value set to 1, and the roughness value set to something like 0 0.25. I'm not going to cover how the pixelated effect of the original was done, so if you want to know how to create that as well, then you should head over to the Ruben Blends original video. Oh, and tell them I sent you. See you next time.